Good evening and welcome back to today's NCAA Division I Women's Basketball National Semifinal Game 1 post-game press conference featuring the NC State Wolfpack. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach Moore and then we'll follow with questions to our student athletes. As a reminder, the student athletes will then be dismissed and then we will open up questions for Coach. So Coach, at this time, we'd ask that you pre give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go to the questions for student athletes. Well, first of all, I, I mentioned earlier, I felt like this was the best South Carolina team they've had uh, because of the, you know, obviously the presence of Cordoza on the block is, is tough to match up with. And then they have so many players that are capable of knocking down three-point shots. And unfortunately, that's kind of what happened in the third period, actually the second half. Uh, you know, we got outscored uh, 44 to 20 in the paint. So, uh, start of the third quarter, we didn't do a really good job in our man-to-man -man of uh, defending pick on the ball and rotating and things like that. So we tried to go zone and um, probably should have got out of it quicker. But uh, again, give them credit. Uh, third quarter, we got outscored uh, 29 to six, and that was the ball game. So, uh, but again, tip your hat to them. I think they hit six out of ten threes and. Uh, in the second half, and, and again, uh, we're really hurting us in the paint. So, we've got a great team, and, and uh, again, we've had an unbelievable season. I'm proud of these young ladies. The run we've been on uh, just stinks to end it this way, but uh, I'm sure after we've had a time, a little bit of time away from it and can reflect, uh, we'll have a lot to be proud of. At this time, we'll open it up for questions for our student athletes. As a reminder, for those in the room, please raise your hand and we'll get the microphones to you from our microphone. We'll start with Mitchell. We'll go to Lindsay and then we'll work our way over. Yeah, Mitchell Northam, North Carolina Public Radio. Um, for either of the players, you know, Coach mentioned that the third quarter was kind of change of the game. Um, the first half was so competitive. What was the big difference in the third quarter? We'll start with Isaiah. Um, <clears throat> like you said, the first half was very competitive, you know. Um, I just felt like in the third quarter, we didn't come out in a locker room how we were supposed to come out in the locker room, you know. Um, I felt like we could have fought harder. I felt like we hung our heads and, um, you know, got into our heads mentally. Um, you know, as a leader, I, I want to fault myself because, I, you know, I could have I helped. I could have said more up there. But at the end of the day, I'm still proud of my team. You know, I want to pick any other girls to play with. You know, um, like Coach Moore said, everybody doubted us and we made it here. So I'm just so proud of them. And River, do you have any additional to add? I mean, yeah, she touched it. Um, we could have come out in the third quarter stronger. I mean, when our offense isn't flowing, we really have to lock in on defense and get stops. And that usually translates and fuels our um, on defense. And then it usually translates and fuels our offense. So and yeah, just keeping our heads up and picking each other up and keeping our energy. That's when we play our best. We'll stay to our right, Lindsay. Lindsay Gibbs with power plays. Uh, Isaiah, when you left the court, it looked like you and Coach had a moment. Uh, can you share? Do you want to share what was said in that moment and what that what you were feeling? Um, he was just letting me know what I have, what I could have done on that last play um, when I got my shot block. Uh, so it was just a, a you know coach to player moment at that time. It no matter what the score was, you know he still is going to be a coach at the end of the forty minutes always. I'm going to move to our left. Yeah, Rob McLam with Inside Pack Sports for both players. Uh, obviously, the, the close loss at Vitek Tech and then the close loss to Notre Dame and Greensboro, they were almost titles. How did y'all rebound and get to the Final Four from that? And how proud of you are the fact that you at least hung that banner? We'll start with River. Honestly, I think we used the doubts and being underestimated as motivation. Um, I mean, playing Notre Dame in the ACC Championship, losing to Virginia Tech twice. Just using that as motivation, watching the film, fixing what we can fix, and just moving on to the next play, the next game, um, has benefited us. Um, likewise, um, I feel like uh, River said everything, but the difference between those games and this games, I feel like we didn't move to the next play. I feel like every mistake we made, we hung our head and not look forward to the next play. And we're definitely going to look at film and we're definitely going to fix that. Aaron Farrar, NC State's technician. Um, you both now have a few years under your belt with NC State. How has this run and this team felt different than any other years you've had in the past at, with the pack? Um, 
I've been here for three years and I see a major difference on this team. You know, it's a I feel like it's a player led team. We stick together on and off the court. You see the joy, you see the enjoyment, you see the the chemistry that we have. You know, we it's never a dull moment between these girls. You know, they're not my they're not just my teammates. These are my sisters. Like I'm gonna like keep this sorry. I'm gonna keep this memory forever. Oh yeah, I love these people. I love these group of girls forever. Like these are my sisters, and I'm so proud of them. How much hard, like how work, how much hard we worked to get here. Like we left it, we left everything on the court each game, and I'm so grateful to have them. I'm so grateful to have Coach Moore. Yeah. Want to stay to our left? There we are. Brian Pertle with Pack Pride. Uh, just in the final minute there, even even with the score almost final, Wolfpack fans, you have the, the Wolf Pack chant right towards the end there. What does it say about the culture that this program has that they were, they were sticking up and making themselves heard to the very end? Was that a question for both? Yes. Okay, we'll start with River. Yeah, um, Wolfpack Nation has followed us across the country. Their support is unmatched. Their love is unmatched. Um, I couldn't ask for a better support system, fans. Um, yeah. Yeah, like Wolfpack Nation is like no other. Like, it's our. It's not just the crowd. It's like they're our family. You know, the love that they share with us, and you know, through wins and losses, they always gonna have our backs. We're gonna move to our right, Dion. If you could raise your hand so student athletes can see you. Deion Cash, Fox Sports. Um, congratulations on a great season. In the first quarter, you guys punched first. You hit them in the mouth first. Uh, but it seemed like after that, they were kind of able to kind of catch you guys off guard, kind of throw you off guard a little bit. Was it something different they did? And uh, Miss Baldwin, they had two tremendous bigs inside. You did great, but what was it like battling two of those ladies instead of just one where they uh, they really worked inside with you guys. Yeah, um, you got to credit the bigs of South Carolina. They do a good job using their physicality. They're big. They keep the ball high. I mean, Cordoso holds the ball above her head, and I can't reach it. So, I mean, you just have to use your body and make them score over you and try to keep them away from the basket as best as you can. But at the end of the day, it's layups. <laughs> You know, uh, they just they just punched us in the mouth in the third quarter. I feel like the third quarter really hurt us. Um, I feel like we could have fought harder. Um, you know, it was six to twenty nine, so we we can't let that like things like that happen to win a championship. So yeah, we'll take our final two questions. We'll go with Lindsay, and then we'll come back up to the front row. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays River. You spoke um, after the games in Raleigh. We spoke about how this team coming here had made you fall back in love with basketball. Uh, can you <laughs> expand a little bit on that as your college career comes to, um, comes to an end? I wouldn't trade my two years in Raleigh for anything. Um, I found a family here, a true family. They gave me confidence. They made me fall in love with the game again. Having coaches that have confidence in you and trust you and teammates that trust you and love you on and off the court and just knowing you can turn to that family at any time is incredible. Um, the chemistry on this team is unmatched. I've never played with a group of girls like this. Um, just having the run that we have, not only have I fallen in love with basketball again, but we made history at NC State. Um, like I said, I wouldn't trade these two years in Raleigh for anything. We'll take our final question. Daniel Wilson, Inside Pack Sports. Um, as I am, obviously this isn't your only uh, deep tournament run. You were on the Elite Eight team in uh, 2022. Uh, what are the similarities that you've seen from this year's squad and that one and what are some of the things that you want to carry over and impart on uh, the team next year with the new freshman class coming in uh, as uh, one of the older statesmen now? Yeah, um, like I said before, you know, this this bond with the team, like I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Like 
even after that loss, we just came in the locker room and, you know, we told each other, you know, this win is going to, I mean, this loss is going to, like, it's going to hurt right now, you know. But we have to still stick together and be a family and still love each other, you know. Um, as a senior next year, I'm going to, you know, still emphasize that the same way. Just we're going to be a sisterhood. We're going to have that strong chemistry on and off the court. So that's, it's going to be stronger. It's going to be even stronger. Thank you very much for your time, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Lindsay, did, are you raising your hand? We'll start with you. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Uh, Coach, when you hear River talk about her time in this program, what does that mean to you, and what has she meant to NC State? Yeah. It's going to be hard to replace. Um, yeah, I'm just so proud of her. She really had always been kind of a, almost a role player. And, uh, you know, we talked early in the year and told her she was going to have to be somebody that we run things through. And, you know, in our system, you got to have somebody that's a consistent scorer down there. And uh, just unbelievable what she uh, was able to do. and. Uh, how we leaned on her for inside presence on both ends of the floor. And there was times when maybe the shot wasn't going down, but I couldn't take her off the court because she did such a great job on the boards. Uh, so taking charges, you know, how many uh, post players do you see take as many charges as she has? So uh, I've loved having her. Um, going to miss her, but uh, it's a big – <laughs> You know, right now we've, uh, we're going to be running that donut offense with a big hole in the middle uh, without her. We'll go to Chantel, and then we'll move to Mitchell. Hey, Wes, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. This team is definitely built differently than some of the recent teams that Donna's had in terms of its depth. Can you just give us a sense of the challenges of game planning against and playing against a team where players like Ashlyn Watkins or Miley Shuffle-Wiley are coming off the bench? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Watkins had... 20 rebounds tonight. Um, uh, just like I said, just to be able to have such an inside-outside game. Uh, you know, there was times, you know, we were trying to maybe double from the weak side on Cordoza or, you know, maybe dig from the ball side and try to get it out of there. But uh, if she, she buries you so deep that, you know, even doubling's hard to do. And then when they shoot it like that, I mean, they came into the game with two players shooting 43% from three and one shooting 47% from three. So we knew it was going to be a challenge. You just hope you catch them on a night when maybe they're not shooting well from the perimeter so that you can give a little more attention uh, to Cardoza. But uh, again, I think it's the best team they've had uh, because of that. So. Tough matchup. You know, I regret now going to the zone and definitely not getting out of it sooner. But we did. We came out in the third quarter. Uh, we just weren't aggressive enough. And that's on me. You know, I, I don't know what happened. But uh, we were a step slow. We, we didn't execute pick on the ball defense. When we did try to double Cardoza, the weak side didn't rotate. And, and uh, they got layups. Uh, so again, I should have probably used every timeout I had and tried to get their focus back. But again, they took advantage of it. We'll go to Mitchell. We're going to go to our right-hand side. Yeah, Wes, um, you know, after that Elite Eight run in 22, um, you know, you lose four starters. Um, River and, and Mimi are two of the players that ended up transferring in. Last year, you lose four starters. Those two stick around. This year, they're kind of the super senior veterans, the fifth years. What did they kind of mean, I guess, um, to sort of lead this team and yeah. this new era sort of NC State basketball? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Um, last year, for whatever reason, we, we had – more depth of talent, more experience. You know, we had kids that were on that Elite Eight team. But for whatever reason, that's probably the danger of the portal. It just didn't mesh. And uh, we had some great wins. You know, we beat Iowa on the road. Um, you know, we beat Louisville on the road. I mean, I don't know who all, but we had, we had some great wins. And uh, then down the stretch, uh, we just, we didn't jail. And uh, so, 
you know, sometimes it's addition by subtraction. We lost some players, and these players knew they were going to be counted on to be leaders, you know, River and Mimi in particular, and uh, some of the others. And, uh, you know, when you put a player in that position, um, you hope that they step up and grab the bull by the horn, and they did. So, uh, the heck of a ride compared to where we started and where we finished. We're going to go to our right. We'll go with Dion, then we'll go Ryan, Rob. All right, Dion Cash, Fox Sports. Uh, congratulations, Coach Moore. In the first half, in the first quarter, you guys punched them in the first half. First. I mean, first half, we're down one point. So, I mean, again, we tied them in the first quarter, one down in the second quarter. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know that the second quarter we lost anything, but third quarter we lost it. Did, was What were some of the things that you did well in the first quarter in the first half that you were trying to do in the second half, but it just didn't work? Well, I think combination. Again, I give them credit. They turned up the heat and did a great job defensively. Uh, and like I said, they came out really uh, offensively. They were aggressive. The pick and roll, we didn't, we didn't do a good job of getting up and doing what we wanted to do against it. And we, we looked slow. We looked flat-footed. And then when I saw that and saw how they were killing us inside, we tried to go zone, and, and uh, that didn't look very good either. And, and give them credit. They hit six out of ten threes in the second half, but in the third quarter in particular, they hit five out of nine threes. Uh, so when you're doing that, you know, I noticed uh, at halftime, um, Pow Pow, I think, was 0 for 3, and Bree Hall was 0 for 3 from 3. So in the second half, you know, one of them goes two for two, and the other one goes one for one, and that changes things. Yep, yep, in the third quarter. So they hit shots. Uh, they did a good job defensively. Uh, again, I'll take some of the blame for that. We looked stagnant in the third quarter. We stood around. We went one on one too much instead of moving the ball and moving our bodies and uh, putting some pressure on them. So uh, I'll probably throw up a couple of times when I watch the third quarter and second guess the heck out of myself for the next six months. But other than that, hey, I'm happy. <laughs> hey, Coach, Brian Pertle with Pat Pride. Looking back on that 2022 team, the two players that were on that team, Isaiah James, your leading scorer, Madison Hayes, your leading rebounder for the season. Uh, how big is it now for after this after this run for players that are coming back to have that that experience on the big stage, have Final Four experience going forward? Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's uh, – Great experience, and hopefully uh, we can draw from that. You know, I told them today, I thought the last three weeks, our practices were unbelievable, our energy, our focus, we were locked in. And I told them today, you know, hey, next year, let's try to do that, you know, from day one. But, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it's got to help. And, I mean, this has been an unbelievable experience. You know, I've been a head coach 35 years in college, uh, first time ever to be on this stage myself, and uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, the NCAA, the committee, Cleveland, the host, uh, all, all the people that are involved in this have done an unbelievable job of making you feel, well, we're in Cleveland, like rock stars, okay? Hopefully that little guy doesn't come out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's a great experience, and hopefully it makes you hungry to want to get back and uh, take another shot at it. We're going to stay to our left, Coach, with Rob in the center. Rob McLean with Inside Pack Sports. Uh, I was kind of reminiscing 10 years ago, I was covering you in the WNIT, and now you're here in the Final Four. Uh, you mentioned the team two years ago. Players from both of those teams were in the stands supporting y'all. Yeah. Now you have this banner they're going to hang. This group's going to hang a banner. It'll be yeah. there 25 years. Uh, do you sense a camaraderie building, and do you sense there's a momentum and a love that's kind of building it, that's lifting this thing up. Yeah, that's what's pretty neat. You know, when, uh, of course, I was with Coach Yao for, you know, 93 to 95. Um, so I think when you're out of school, you know, now 11 years here, uh, you have players that played for you your first two or three years, and then you have players that are playing for you now, but they all share that family feeling. And uh, no doubt, it's great to see them here. It's you know great for them when they call you, they text you. Um, but definitely, and, and, and that really, even before I got here, because when we have 
you know, play for K games are special all over the country, but you can imagine how special they are in Raleigh. And we usually have a lot of our former players back. And it's just amazing, again, the connection the players feel from all eras uh, for playing for NC State. And our fans probably have a lot to do with that as well. I'm going to go back to our right with Lindsay. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Coach, uh, Sanaya had a rough night tonight. Yeah. What do you, what's your message to her? And also, what are you looking forward to going forward with her and as yeah. I as leaders? Yeah, it happens. And again, tough situation, play your former team. And, and I'm sure they wanted to try to make sure she didn't, you know, have a big night as well. And, um, but we wouldn't be here without Sanaya. She's had an unbelievable season and a great leader for us. And uh, it happens. And, uh, you know, again, uh, that's part. Of, that's been our strength all year. When somebody's had a bad night, some you know, one or two other players have stepped up and scored 20 or 25. Uh, we've had, you know, still had five people in double figures. Unfortunately, tonight, you know, we didn't didn't really have a lot of that. But uh, again, bad night to have a bad night. But I give South Carolina a lot of credit for that. Coach, we're going to take a question via Zoom. Joshua Louder, your line is open. You may proceed. Joshua Louder, Joshua Louder, Television Network. Coach Moore, um, congratulations on an incredible. Just how does um, being on this stage make you a better coach <laughs> and your 35 years of coaching? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's. Um, Right now, I don't feel like a very good coach uh, after that butt kicking. But, you know, our players, you know, you got to have players. I always say you don't win the Kentucky Derby with a mule. You got to have horses. And and our players have just played great, you know, most of the season and most nights. And uh, that's what it's about. You know, I, I learned that lesson. I've probably given you more than you want. But I learned that lesson really well when I got to UT Chattanooga. And my first year, we won. I think 10 games. The next year we won 26. I did the same exact things. We ran the same stuff. We ran practices. We prepared everything the same. We just had a different set of players. So I learned real early, uh, it's about them. Uh, it's not about me. So great players. We'll take our final question from the back. Uh Coach, uh, Sean Hearn, uh, Anscape. Um, I'm just curious, what makes coaching against Don Staley uh, difficult to either prepare for or over the course of a game adjust to? Yeah, well, again, she's a great coach and she has great players and that's a tough combination to go up against. Like I said, I think it's the best team. You know, we beat them a few years ago at their place when they had Aaliyah Boston and we were able to kind of cheat off some people and give more attention to, to Boston and try to slow her down a little bit. It's hard to do that with that team right there. If you try to help on the post, uh, somebody else is going to make you pay. And, uh, you know, since that's what happened in the first half, uh, what were they from three? They were uh, two for nine in the first half, and we we're in the game. And then the second half, they're six for 10, and here we go. So, uh, but again, great coach. and. Uh, you know, they, they got after us defensively, kind of took us out of things we wanted to do maybe. And um, offensively, you know, the fast break points, hadn't even talked about that. We got beat 21 to six off fast break. Um, you know, we talked all week about we can't give up easy points. And that was off fast break and off second chance points off boards. Uh, we did a pretty good job on the boards, didn't get it done on the break. So. Uh, they find your weakness and they exploit it. Thank you again for your time this evening, Coach. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay.